This is WPTV. Welcome everyone. Warm up those pizza rolls, grab your Funyuns, because this is a pretty big week. Tonight on Press Start, EA Games shut down Visceral Games, and why? Also, we have our first ever Press Start Top 10 and our franchise face-off, PlayStation versus Xbox. I'm Dave Dawson, and welcome back to Press Start. <laughs> Tonight, my good friend Joe will be reading our news roundup. Joe, what do you have for us this week? A lot, Dave. Hello, everyone. I'm Joan Vallejo, bringing you this week's news roundup. Arcade cabinet creator Raw Thrills has announced that they are currently making a new arcade game featuring our favorite heroes in a half shell. Raw Thrills has previously worked on cabinets for the Fast and Furious franchise, Guitar Hero, Batman, Hydro Thunder, and Injustice, so the project is in good hands. The new cabinet will be directly inspired by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show that is currently in its fifth season on Nickelodeon. They hope to modernize the TMNT beat-em-up that was originally released in 1989 and later ported the NES. The new cabinet concept features um, a large plane area with a large HD screen and four distinct joysticks and buttons for the four turtles. Ralph Thrill told reporters that the game will include more environmental interaction, turtle power, special attacks, and team up moves to, in order to induce cooperative play. The game will also include all the voiced actors from the show, like Seth Green, to give most authentic appearances possible. The cabinet will hopefully be playable in mid-November at the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions Expo. I was actually, uh, this might be showing my age a little bit, but I was actually in Las Vegas uh, last summer and I went to the Pinball Museum Hall of Fame and I actually got to play the original arcade cabinet for Ninja Turtles. It was the best $70 I ever spent on an arcade. It was great. Well, earlier this year, Kong Skull Island gave audiences a monster-sized Easter egg for those who stayed after the credits. 2014's Godzilla was confirmed to take place in the same universe, or Monsterverse, as the mighty King Kong. Godzilla vs. Kong will hit the big screens in 2020. But wait, there's more. Pacific Rim Uprising director Steve Asdenite recently said, Look, I think it would be fantastic to have the Pacific Rim universe join the legendary monsters universe. It seems like a natural step. And part of the big overall plan is after the third movie, we've talked about is that it could happen. It's always a possibility. It's by far not a certainty, but it's merely theoretical at this point. And as a fan myself, I would love to see that happen. Although Denight has said Uprising has a definitive ending, it will leave the door open for the next chapter of the series. Nothing would please us more than to see two giant mechs fighting alongside the King of Monsters, Godzilla, and the eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. Pacific Rim Uprising hits theaters March 23rd, 2018. It's like Avengers, but on even more steroids. <laughs> what more could you possibly want? <laughs> I would be so excited to see that. Right. After years of development, on October the 17th, the world was introduced to its first giant robot battle back in 2015. Megabots, a US-based engineering team, challenged Japanese-teamed Suidadashi to a duel to end all duels. After three years of setbacks, it finally took place, being live-streamed to the world last Tuesday. It took three grueling rounds full of paintballs and chainsaws, but in the end, it was the US who claimed victory over Japan. After the fight, Megabots made plans for the future, now wanting to create a new giant robot fighting league. Still, viewers were very skeptical over what they saw, as not only did Megabots have the advantage of having a second robot, but the whole fight itself seemed choreographed. Could it be possible that the fight was rigged from the start? According to Motherboard, there was absolutely nothing live about the fight at all, with the actual fight taking place over a few days and any footage of lengthy repairs being cut. This means that robot dueling may not be as close as we once thought it was before. Looks like we'll just have to wait for World War III. I keep waiting. <laughs> Anyone remember the buzz uh, around the great game, the great detective Pikachu? It was the first game where the icon of the Pokemon universe was not only good, going to speak words beyond his own name, but was going to be solving crimes Sherlock Holmes style. The game was only released in Japan, but gained worldwide press when a petition was started to get Danny DeVito to voice the yellow Thunderbolt machine. 
Now Nintendo has teamed up with Legendary Pictures to make a live action movie of the game for a worldwide release. When this was announced, rumors began to circulate as to who would voice the new career-driven Pikachu. And the short list included many of Hollywood's biggest names. But the front runner as of right now is Dwayne Johnson. That's right. The most electrifying man in wrestling may now become the most electrifying game of Pokemon in the big screen. Because of his most recent performance in the Disney movies, Moana, and his upcoming reboot of Jumanji, he is now seen as someone who can take the jump into the family-friendly landscape. Let's just hope they don't watch the Tooth Fairy or the game plan before his audition. That's it for this week's News Roundup. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Joe. Pikachu's own live detective film. This year just keeps getting weirder. Coming up next, we have the demise of visceral games and why. See you then.